Hey, what's up, everybody? This is DJ Keo. And before we even get started, the first thing I want to know, what kind of equipment do you use to produce your music with and what kind of software are you using? I started off on the Ensonic 16 and I moved up to, that was my first keyboard, like that first anything to make music with. And um, I saved up some bucks and slowly worked my way up to ASR 10. And that was the, that was the big daddy. ASR ten had the crispiest sound processors in there, and made your made your drum sound phenomenal. Like it, it just couldn't help it. Just wrapped the, by default. Same thing with the MPC three thousand, and that's why it was a huge. Like a lot of the main producers used it. Bink is one of those people. He's the Bink has the weirdest system for making beats. Uh, I don't know. If, I, I, <laughs> I don't know if I could divulge it, but like he he uses the MPC three thousand as his MIDI controller, and he uses that so he, he uses it to control his keyboards and uh, Pro Tools, but everything's controlled by the three thousand, and it's just his process is so it's genius because you know he runs his drums through the 3000 so that's why his stuff sounds the way it does that is one of the best drum machines ever made just like the ASR10 was one of the best samplers ever made we're getting off topic here so anyways i moved from the ASR10 to the computer and i started using cubase so i went from that i started with cubase and then i slowly moved on to what i'm using currently today and that's ableton um I love Ableton. Ableton is the weirdest software for music production out there, bar none. Uh, it looks weird. The whole process, how you do stuff. So if you're using a parallel bus for compressors on Ableton, like it's just, it's a weird thing. It's not intuitive. Uh, but actually, what's interesting about Ableton is one. I think it's one of the most popular software for for producers for dance music. I, I think most people are using Ableton versus all the other stuff. Uh, anyways, we're, we're getting off topic. Akai is crushing it right now when it comes to this type of gear. They're really going all out. Um, I think this is basically the cheapest full-featured standalone type drum machine that you can get. Uh, if you're using machine, whatever, you still need a computer, except the big, the big honking one, studio, whatever it is. Uh, yeah, you're not, you're not throwing that in your backpack. Like that's a whole chore to just get it off your desk. But I think this is the smallest, most complete drum machine there is out there. Uh, and it just got released at Nam, which is why I love Nam. I I watch Nam with like. Like it's the Oscars because all this cool stuff comes out every day. And it's basically the future. If you're worried about the future, you need to watch this stuff. Google NAM is NAMM uh, 2020. You should be able to find what stuff is leaked out. And if you Google it on YouTube, you can see new stuff released on that every day. Anyways, um, this seems like a really cool drum machine you got a multi-touch display rgb pads two gigs of ram four big gigs on on board storage so you can ton of you could can't talk right now you can store a ton of music on there people don't really think the samples samples are small so you can throw a ton of libraries on there you have your sd card in the front and a usb flash in the back so you could it's expandable you could throw a bunch of crap in there yeah i love that it's got full size quarter inch out. So the sound, people don't know this. It, RCA is awful for your outputs. You're better off with XLR or quarter inch. RCA is garbage, especially if you're taking this and you're recording it into another system. But I mean, most times you're just going to record it internally, so it's not an issue. But uh, if you're doing performance or something with this, you want quarter inch or, or XLR. Uh, it's still using MIDI, which is, <laughs> that that blows my mind. MIDI's been around since the dawn of computers and recording. And the mere fact that they still have to put it in the back of stuff is crazy to me. Uh, USB should have taken over that fact decades ago, and it still hasn't done it. 
So I, I think it's more about legacy products and that kind of stuff. But still, the mere fact that it's there is shocking, but not so much. Yeah, the cool thing about this is that you can use it as a controller for the software on your computer, or you could just take it on the road with you and just plug it into a wall and go like that. There doesn't appear to be a battery, which is kind of, that's kind of sucky, especially after Denon just did the, the go with the battery. <laughs> I think battery gets four hours on a Denon. Like it, an hour would have been amazing. Even like you, you want to make an emergency beat on the airplane or something like that. An hour would have been cool. But, you know, given the size, and I think they had to give up some stuff. They had to make compromises just to make it fit. So there's input and output quarter inches on there. So you can record directly into the sample if you, if you want to. If you got a collection of records, for instance, uh, it seemed pretty cool. I know what you want. I want to know what you guys think. Um, yeah, I definitely want to know what, what kind of equipment do you guys use to produce? Is this something that you would use? You know, or are you trying to get into production? Cause they, for me, I, Right now, I make remixes. I'm not really trying to sell music anymore. That, those days are gone. <laughs> I basically use it now to enhance my DJing stuff. So, um, you know, you, songs like any any song that doesn't have an intro or like there's no real drum beat on it, I'll throw my own drums on there. Just to, because there's a lot of songs that were cool, but could be so much better if they had bass or whatever. So. And whenever I find a song like that, I just, I'll flip it myself. I don't worry. If, I don't wait for a remix. I'll just do it myself. Or a lot of times songs don't have a proper count in. So you could do like a metronome count in and then have it go right on beat into the mix. If, you know, you want to blend or you do, your, if you're multitasking and you don't want to, you don't even think about that, you could do that. Um, make your life easier, man. Don't wait for other people to do it for you. Do this yourself. Uh, so yeah, I, a lot of times I use this to make remixes and stuff for current songs. I don't know how how helpful it would be to do that. <laughs> Importing an actual song into that, I don't know how helpful that would be. That seems to be like a whole other process. And it's one of the reasons why I wasn't too keen on the Serato Studio. It... Uh, it's really difficult to do that kind of stuff. I think they worked it out where you can do it now. So <laughs> there's a lot of people still leaving angry comments on that video <laughs> saying, dude, man, you can do, you got the whole thing wrong. I'm like, well, at the time when I made it, which was months ago, if you said to check the date, you couldn't do any of this stuff. It was bland, like white bread, mayonnaise. It was bland. You couldn't do anything on it. They've improved a lot. And it's a lot better. It still sucks with the streaming, which is why they, they've included the purchase feature, which I hope, I want to humble brag, but I, I, I would wish that enough people <laughs> saw the video and they're like, oh, crap, we should actually make people pay because it's not worth it. I should, I have a video, I'm going to make a video about streaming and a video about renting your dj equipment and your software because this is the future everybody's embrace the future the future is you're not going to own your dj software you are going to pay to use dj software in the future and that is when i check out <laughs> that is my last update <laughs> that's a whole other topic anyways i forgot what i was talking about <laughs> one too many beers man don't make videos with beers anyways uh yeah, let me know what you guys think about the MPC one. I think it's kind of cool. I wish it had some more features, but uh, I the whole concept is cool. Anything that you know you shrink down and make it for the go, I'm on board that. As long as there's a larger version, there needs to be a full size regular version with everything in it. But if you got a small one and it's cheaper, and you throw in your backpack, I'm on board that all day. Anyways, let me know what you guys think. Um, yeah, I definitely want to know what kind of uh, gear you use to produce with and what kind of software you're using to produce. So leave that below. And uh, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And uh, peace out. Bro.